Hello folks uh, and welcome to Almost Solitaire. Um, today we are playing, I think this is the last battle from the Caesar's Gallic Wars that we will uh, play. Um, I think so at least, I'm not sure, 100% sure, but I think so. Uh, so the battle we're gonna do today is Gergovia 52 BC. So it's taking place pretty much after Caesar has uh, completed his uh, conquest of Gaul. Uh, but in 52 BC, there was a big rebellion happening, uh, led by this guy, by King Getorix, uh, who um, kind of managed to, um, you know, found a confederation of, uh, of uh, Gallic tribes, uh, and together they would rise against uh, Caesar and, and the Romans. A big problem for the Romans, but he, I mean, Caesar, of course, uh, took up the challenge and started to campaign against uh, Vercingetorix. Uh, now, Vercingetorix, of course, knew, I mean, he has seen the Romans battling for many years before this uh, in Gaul, so he knew what uh, dangerous enemy Caesar and the Romans were, uh, with the disciplined troops with of good quality and, you know, Good armaments and all that so he kind of um, tried to well, well he didn't uh, commit to uh, um, you know a pitched battle with on the field with the Romans but he instead uh, did use you know he uh, kind of a scorched earth, earth uh, sorry scorched, scorched earth tactics uh, and also um, you know sitting in in, in walled cities um pretty much waiting it out and um well caesar did a lot of sieges he took uh, many cities and just before this battle he actually took uh uh the city of um let's see avaricum um that's a big city uh in 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 gallic terms so um yeah so and also there was actually other towns that he besieged and took before this and there was some maneuvering happening before this but in the end Ro the Romans uh, and Caesar uh, came to Gergovia which is the hometown of Vercingetorix uh, uh, himself so he wanted I mean this, this is of course a symbolic act as well for the Romans to uh, break down those city walls and uh, capture the city the hometown of Vercingetorix uh, uh, by the way Vercingetorix had been previously expelled from the city by his own folks um, but he was now back and now more you know accepted as a leader so uh, he had the folks behind it uh, behind him uh, this time um, so um, the Romans as I said uh, working get rigs were really doing you know uh, kind of attacking supply uh, routes of the Romans. Um, and the Romans were uh, pretty much also um, depending on on other Gallic tribes in their back, you know, to keep their supply lines flowing. And um, most notably, it's the Aedui tribe who were kind of close allies to, to the Romans. But they did actually uh, kind of a treason thing here, uh, attacking Romans uh, at, at one point. Uh, Caesar had to quell that kind of Adui separate rebellion, but he he got the rebel leader. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure if there was a battle. I think there was some kind of a fighting going on, and Caesar of course won that. So the more Roman uh, friendly Aduis were again um, on the road. Um, I mean, and the Adui tribes were again on the Roman side. You could say so. He had his supply routes more secure at this point of time, but still a bit shaky, you know, and also Vercingetorix and the Arverni tribes, which is uh, his uh, kind of uh, home tribe, uh, they did all these um, harassments and all that, so it was never, never, you know, 100% secure with the supplies, and also, you know, burning, uh, burn, burned earth uh, tactics, so Romans had problems. Uh, anyway, um, the, the opposite was also true because 
outside of the city of Gergovia, it's told that there was some hill. I don't know. It's not depicted here, I believe. That was really crucial for the for the um, Gauls because they have that was the main source of fresh water to the city. They, they, there was some kind of a smaller uh, river or something within the city, so they got water, but not in the amount that they really needed. So this hill that the Romans already uh, took when this battle starts uh, is always in, in Roman hands, and and um, it is a problem for the for the Gauls, of course. Um, so the Romans did some maneuvering here. Uh, they built a camp. You can see the walls, the ramparts here, and they did some maneuvering, luring away a big part of the of the Gauls, including Vercingetorix. Uh, and, and when while they were gone, uh, he took his forces that's still here to attack the city itself. Uh, so they went. I mean, Gergovia was uh, located on a really big, steep hill. You can see. Uh, pictures of that today of that hill it's really a big plateau on on, on a big you know, flatlands there so it's uh, it's really a good defendable place they started to move up um, managed to press back uh, uh, the goals a bit uh, they were but they were fierce fighting and it was a slow progress here and at one point then Verking Getrix, when he heard about what was what was happening here, he returned from with his troops from you know that diversion thing happening outside the map here, and entered the battlefield, uh, and together, uh, with joint forces there managed to push back the Romans, so they had to abandon the, the assault on the on the city itself. Uh, probably they backed off to their main camp here, I believe. Uh, so this was actually one of the rare occasions where the Gauls and Vercingetorix managed to win over the Romans in, in any of these campaigns, especially when, when Caesar himself was uh, present. Uh, so this is a rare one in that, in that sense. Uh, the, the very next day after the, this battle, Caesar still, I mean, the Romans were still here. They tried to get the... Um, working Getrix town team, you know, to get down on the plane and have a, you know, proper battle happening, but he wouldn't take that bait. They were just sitting, waiting in the, in their, you know, good uh, defensible positions here. So the Romans had eventually. I mean, they had too much problems. They couldn't stay here. I think also winter was coming actually, so they had to uh, back off uh, due to supply issues. So he couldn't. It was just too dangerous to, to stay here, so he had to back off, uh, and that was really the confirmation of uh, the King Getrix victory here. So that's cool. Uh, but soon after, uh, there will be another big uh, um, siege, you know, Alesia. You probably have heard of that, and that's really spells doom for the King Getrix and his. Uh, um, rebellion in the end uh, but that's a whole different story uh, also there there was some fierce fighting going on uh, and tough battles and it's a bit strange that there is no scenario here depicting Alicia but um, that would be a cool cool one actually to include here but maybe it's in the other booklet or something at least it's not here in the Civil Wars booklet uh, as I said in the beginning, I'm, I'm under the impression that this is the last one from, from the Gallic Wars, but I might be wrong. Anyway, uh, let's continue here. So, um, today's battle then, uh, if we look at the War Council, we have um, uh, the Gallic army led by the King Getrix. They got five command cards. We have the Roman army led by Julius Caesar, also from uh, five command cards, and they will move first. We'll fight till eight banners. Uh, and so this is a big one. On the other hand, there are, uh, which is not too common in the ancient battles, I mean, commands and colors ancient battles, that we see a lot of, you know, victory banners dealt from 
uh, from from places on the map. Um, mostly, you know, you just kill off enemy units and get victory banners by that. But here, there's uh, actually several uh, different ways you can gain victory banners, as we will see in a sec, because as you can see, there are quite a bunch of special rules here. So let's uh, go through them one by one. Uh, okay, so first one is about the Gallic reinforcements. Uh, so that's the guys over here. I have placed them here. That's Verkingetrix himself. Uh, and there's two warriors and two auxilia uh, coming in. Uh, they can be ordered to enter the battle by playing any leadership card. When ordered, set the units on any of the five hexes indicated on the Gallic uh, right. Uh, that would be Gallic, yeah, Gallic right, that's true. Uh, Gallic right with breaking Gatrix attached to one unit. These units may not move further on this turn, but may battle. So here's the marker. So they would need to set up one, two, three, four, five. I think it's uh, along the edge here, these five hexes. Uh, so they just enter here by playing a leadership card. They cannot move, but if there are any Romans, in the vicinity they can battle and I assume they can also throw their javelins if needed but I th think they would act as they have moved right so they will only probably fly with one die uh, then it's kind of continues in the second bullet then prior to the next Roman player turn the Roman player must place his one reinforcement uh, reinforcing unit on any baseline hex in his left section. The unit uh, now becomes part of the uh, on-map Roman army and may be ordered to move or battle. So we have a one uh, legionary unit here that will appear anywhere on the left baseline section here. Uh, also marked here as you can see. Um, third bullet. The Julius Caesar rule and the Julian legions rule are in effect. So just to recap, uh, Julius Caesar rule is, if I remember correctly, you, if he's attached to a unit, they gain one extra die. And if it is a foot unit, it may move two hexes and battle. You know, the Julian uh, Legion rules are that mediums and heavy can move two hexes, but if they move two, they cannot battle. Uh, if they move one, they can battle and they can also throw their pila. Uh, which is one, a one die um, ranged attack. Uh, so that's that. Then we have the Gallic camp hexes. Okay, so I read this rule before I started recording and it's not super clear to me, but I'll just explain how I will play it. So let's just read it out first. Uh, there are three Gallic camp hexes. When a Roma unit occupies an enemy camp hex at the start of his turn, remove the camp uh, terrain tile hex. Okay, no problems. A victory banner is not gained uh, for the first camp removed, but one victory banner is collected for the second or third um, enemy camp hex removed. Once such a victory banner is gained, it cannot be lost. So what confuses me is it says it's collected for the second or third I mean an and would make it a bit more clear if that's what they if if it's a thing is that they could gain two victory banners by I mean the the, the camp hex are located there by the way so if they remove the first one they would gain none if they move the second or third one they gain one so um I'm not really sure. I, I think I will play it as the, the Romans can only get one victory banner out of those. And it's basically when they have destroyed two, then they will get a victory banner. And then they will not get another one for the third. Because there's something with this, or, I mean, something that this or word here will, I mean, means, right? Um, if it would have said and, I would give them one victory banner each, but not now. I hope I played that correctly. I don't know if you have reacted on this one as well. Uh, let me know if you have and how you understand it. Uh, if a Roma unit occupies a city wall hex, collect a victory uh, banner. 
If the unit moves off or is eliminated, the banner is lost. And the city wall hexes are these ones, the rampart hexes here. That's uh, Gergovia's uh, inner uh, kind of uh, uh, walls. We have some outer walls here that's all, uh, represented here, but those are actually kind of destroyed already. Um, that's that. So, uh, yeah, that's the one. Uh, but I think also that's only one. So if there's an, a Roman unit on any of those hexes, we get one victory banner for that. Um, when a Gallic unit occupies an enemy camp hex at the start of the turn, remove the camp tile. Uh, hex and collect the victory banner that cannot be lost. If a Gallic unit occupies a Roman large camp rampart hex, uh, collect the victory banner. If the unit moves or off or is eliminated, the banner is lost. So we have a camp hex here, and this is probably the lo uh, large camp. So here we remove that, and they get the banner, and they can get another one for any of these hexes. As long as they stay here. Um, then we have the Gallic camp hexes and Gergovia city wall hexes, uh, represented by rampart hexes, are considered to be on a hill. So uh, these are on the same uh, level as uh, the other uh, hill hexes around it. Uh, Gergovia city has uh, scalable walls. Scalable walls terrain rules is in effect. And there's some rules about that. Um, basically, you cannot when you you cannot um, uh, move into those hexes unless you're adjacent to them. And the same goal is if you move out from them, you can only uh, go to the adjacent hex and stop there. Uh, if you attack a unit on on the walls, um, you the it, it's um, the defending unit is considered to ha kind of a, have a first strike card in that sense, so they will actually roll their dice first, even if they are, even though they are defending. Um, mounted units cannot enter, and you cannot evade on them if you're uh, mounted. I believe. Um, otherwise, you can retreat on them if you're a foot unit. Um, I think that's basically it. Otherwise, they work as ramparts hexes, meaning if you attack them, they can ignore one sword symbol and one flag symbol. And if they are attacked by ranged fire, they ignore one uh, flag symbol. Uh, I th think that's the rules in a nutshell of those uh, that terrain. Uh, we'll see if we get all the way there with the Romans. In that case, I have, might need to look up just to be sure I have everything uh, so I play everything correctly over there um, so that's that and then the last one the hill hexes adjacent uh, to forest hexes are too steep to climb and are considered impossible terrain for units in adjacent forest hexes units on hill hexes adjacent to forest hexes may however move or retreat down from a hill hex onto a forest hex a unit on a hill hex may not close combat against the enemy unit on a forest hex or vice versa. So these forest hexes adjacent to the hill, um, you cannot go up there uh, from the forest up on the hill. It's too steep. You can go down, you can retreat in that direction, but no uh, close combat in any direction. Range combat is okay though. So that's basically it. Um, um, so then let's continue with a quick look at the armies uh, on the maps here. So we have, let's start with the Romans. So here we have the kind of the main force uh, led by Sextius uh, here. Uh, so we have four legionary units and um, they are flanked by um, light bow units. We have that Roman camp we talked about. And here we have two heavy infantry led by Julius Caesar. This is the 10th legion. With Sextius, we have another uh, medium uh, legionary unit. 
Here we have two Gallic units. Uh, I believe those are the Aidui tribesmen because I think when uh, when um, Caesar did subdue that rebellion that the Aidui did, who kind of uh, were their you know allies, uh, they had to contribute to this uh, uh, assault on Gergovia. So there are some Aidui uh, men here. Uh, then we have kind of a right hand flank force. Uh, led by Manucius here with the two medium cavalry units, two legionaries and a light infantry. Then we have the camp units. We have two heavy um, war machine units here. I think those have a range of six, so they could actually, well, this line of sight is blocked because of units, but these guys could actually fire up on the hill already. Uh, and then we also have another light infantry here. Then we have, as I mentioned, one more legionary unit that will enter play when, if and when Verkin Getorix enters uh, the game. So for the Gallic side then we have, as I said, Verkin Getorix, two warrior units, two auxilia, entering here on that hill and adjacent to the hill. Then we have a cluster of units over there, uh, on, also on the right hand side, led by Critignatus, uh, and he has three units of warriors and two auxiliary. This is a really powerful force over there. Uh, so the Roman left flank could be in a trouble uh, when Verkin Ketoris comes in and these guys could attack, you know. Then we have, let's go to the other flank. We have another leader with a funny name. His name is uh, Vercasi Vlaunus. He's over there. And he has two medium uh, heavy cavalry with him. Uh, then in the center, defending the city itself, note there's no leaders here. Uh, we have three auxiliary in the front and also a slinger. In the camps, we have a, each camp there's a warrior unit. And then on the city walls it's themselves, we have two light bows. So that's it. Um, as you can see, there are lots of units on both sides. It's a big, big battle. And I mean, this is a busy... Uh, battleground here um, and um, yeah a lot of terrain reinforcements a lot of special rules you can get victory banners here 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 and here you know that's a lot of things going on here uh, and we'll play till eight, till eight banners so it's a it's a big one um, yeah also to mention these uh, the broken ground here are representing uh, some outer walls at the foot of the hill that the Romans have already, I guess they have destroyed them because, uh, um, yeah, there have been some siege activity before here. And just to remind about broken ground, so that's uh, no movement limitations for foot units, except for war machines. They cannot even enter these hexes. Uh, Horse units need to stop if they enter and cannot battle when they enter. Foot units can enter and battle uh, if they want. And these guys who move too can pretty much go through them without anything happening. Um, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I think there's no limitation actually to range combat on these tiles. Uh, only close combat when it's two in and two out. Pretty much as woods and... and of the such terrain. Um, by that I think we're ready to start the game and as I said the Romans will start. Um, just a f some short words about uh, tactics for the Roman side. Uh, I think we want to press up that hill as soon as possible before the, uh, these guys can get their reinforcements, before making Getris come into play and before these guys hopefully reach uh, uh, the, the battle. It would be nice if we could block off those guys, keeping some troops here, and then have a main force attacking up the hill. Uh, it will be a hard fight, but the goal is to get those camps, to get the victory banner from there, and then um, if all goes well, we can approach the city walls themselves. And the cavalry over here will probably need to be fending off against the Gallic cavalry over there. And these guys have great support with heavy war machines and light uh, infantry who could 
bombard them. We have some range support from the Galaxy side as well with these slingers who can cover a big area over here. But um, yeah, we'll see the, how that goes. And as for the goals, uh, we need try to get the reinforcement into play. We can attack the uh, Romans in earnest. And here I probably will just stay defending, wanting to be on the higher ground so we can fight even, I mean, even Oxila can fight on equal terms against uh, uh, Roman legionaries. Uh, even though the Romans can bring in leaders, and we have none here, that's making it more crucial to get those reinforcements into play, the flank units and American Gatorix uh, from outside of the board, uh, as soon as possible. Um, yeah, something like that. But if we get really good cards, and the Romans are entering these hexes, we could even go down to fight uh, about on these old walls here because of the outer walls, because um, uh, that will also give us pretty equal fighting dice. Uh, so it's more valuable units dying here than here if we get some exchange happening already here. And then we could continue smashing from the sides with the reinforcements arriving. So let's see that how that goes. But to dare to go down here, I need to have good cards on the on the uh, Gallic side. Uh, a lot of center cards, maybe you know, clash uh, clash of shields or something cool like that. We'll see. Uh, so by that, I think we're ready to start the game. Okay, so let's start with checking what the Romans have in slot A and B. That's a mounted charge, really good when we get to that point eventually. Here we have light troops. Hmm. We have some bows that could start the game. Um, and some light infantry as well. Okay, but of course we're gonna roll for what card we really can play. That's a uh, tactic card or lowest order count. So it will be, we need to play one of these. And I think, uh, what makes most sense is then the light troops, because we can order, uh, let me see now, five of them. So there's one, two, three, four. We only have four light troops. So let's see now. Let's go here and let's go here. These guys takes one step forward and these guys actually I don't want to get them out. I, I want to keep some defenses here on, on the walls in case something uh, happens that I haven't foreseen. So we have some fire to do then. Let's start on the left flank with a one die attack up the hill towards that auxilia. And directly a hit. Boom. One down. Then we have these guys. Um, I'm not sure if these block line of sight. I don't think so. Hold on, I think I have the rule here. Uh, do, does not block. So I could actually, hold on, I will retract my steps a bit here, then I will not move. I will just stay here and fire with two dice out. And I take as my target, then I stop. I start with these guys. So one die against uh, the slingers. That's a flag. These guys are supported, so they will ignore it. Then we have these guys then, two dice against... Mm. Let's take the auxilia over there. That's a hit. Good uh, arrow shooting by the Romans from start here. That's that. Then we're gonna check what uh, we have here. We have a move fire move. And a double time, meaning 
warriors can go three hexes with um, double time. That's important. So let's see now. But they need to charge then and reach an enemy. Let's see what we can play. A, B, or C. So it's these two cards or this one, which is a line command. I think I want to bring these guys forward. So I'm going to play a line command and activate this cluster of units here. So we're just going to move towards the front. Pretty much like that. It's important to get all these into the action because the Romans would be very worried about their left hand flank. It's really weak. Okay, but it's the Romans who go next. Another one of these. So we only have one card up, so we're gonna open up one more slot. Let's see. So it would be the mounted charge or two unit center. So we're gonna play two units center. Um, so I will continue firing. Um, let's see, center. We only have one of the bow units here, so I'm gonna order that guy. And then. Uh, hmm. Let's make us ready to face these guys. I'm gonna order. No, that's not in the center. Hmm. Let's take Caesar. He will go here. This guy stays and fires. I get the same target with two dice. No hits. Okay. Uh, that was two units center. Now it's the goals again. Now they got uh, tactic cards or lowest order count. We only have tactics cards there, so we're gonna play one of these. Um, and you know what? We could, if we play the double time, we could reach one, two, three. All these guys could reach this guy, and we have all the warriors in, in range. But um, I'm not sure I'm gonna want to do that yet because then we give the Romans the first blow on us. And Caesar is dangerously close as well. So maybe we should do a move for a move before we advance. Um, yeah, I'm gonna play the move. Um, move fire move this time so that's five light units who could move and fire so we're gonna take these guys uh, we're gonna take these two we're gonna take I will actually uh, bring down one of these guys and also uh, one, two, three, four. I can move one, two, three. Ah, they cannot see them. The line of sight is not because of that hill. So I will not take that anyway. Um, let's just take these three then. These guys will move here. These guys will move here. These guys will just stay. So let's fire two dice from here against the light infantry. A hit. First Roman blood. Then these guys have one die javelin attacks to do. So let's start from here, one die. Miss, and the second attack, a miss. Right, that's that. Go back to the Romans. D or E. So, two cards we don't know of. I am Spartacus. Hmm. Or three units left. Well, the Spartacus I will not play yet, so we're gonna play three units left. And. Uh, 
I'm gonna start um, advancing now with the big boys. So I'm gonna go two with these guys, creating a line at the foot of the hill. Two, two, and two. Give them some support. These guys count battle since they went two. But they are hard guys to get away from here because they are supported now. And uh, they are doing tough battle backs with elite support as well, you know. So maybe the... Um, it was three on the left. So maybe the double time, if if they can play that now, it could be worth to do it now here. These guys are a bit in a, in a way though. This can go one, two, three, one, two, three, and then we can get these guys maybe in support here. Yeah, we couldn't perhaps play it anyway. Let's see now what they can play. So that's another tactics card or lowest order count. We need to bring up one more card. Let's take that one. So two in the center or the double time. And I think I might play the double time now and charge in with my um, warriors. Yeah, let's do it. Double time it is. So we're gonna see pretty cool action already. We have not seen any leadership cards yet coming up. So where King Getrix is still uh, doing his business outside. So this cluster is the ones that I will order. And we can now go three hexes since these are warriors. One, two, three. We are again threatening their flank. One, two, three. And these guys will give the support. One, two, three. In both attacks. Uh, these guys will of course evade, but still. So we attack here first because we want these guys um, not to be able to retreat. So we're going to roll four dice and we have leader support. That would be two uh, hits on the Roma Legionaries, who will though battle back with four dice in, and also having leader support. They are getting in three hits on the on these guys. That's tough. That's tough. Then we have these guys attacking the light bows who will try to evade, but we're gonna roll our four dice and any greens are hits. No hits though. So this guy just rushes back to the support of Caesar himself. We cannot gain ground here. So that's the situation. So the goals uh, under, let me see how that, who that was again. Um, that was Critignatus is the name of this uh, leader here. So he's now charging in with his our warriors uh, hitting the flank of the Romans. Caesar seeing this, of course, and perhaps he will um, move in with the 10th legion to counter. And we have a ripe target here for the Romans to get the banner from, actually. Let's see if they manage to do that. Um, uh, hold on. I forgot to put back one of these. And then we need one here. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, that was the Gauls. So, um, let me see now. Did I do this correctly? I played four, six cards. Yes, that's correct then. Or hold on. Yeah, because the Romans started, right? So it should be an even count. Yeah, I was thinking these guys started, but it was actually Romans who started the game. Uh, so let's play yet one more turn. Um, so the Romans have now a Spartacus card, it could be interesting now, we have a mounted charge, not yet too interested in playing that I believe, but that's an A or B, so that would be the mounted charge or otherwise they will play a leadership any section. Yeah, so that's the one we will play of course, but the question is who should we activate? I don't think I want to activate here. We could do that and rush forward also on this flank, or we could continue here either with Caesar or these guys. These guys could hit the enemy. Caesar's guys cannot yet hit the enemy, but we could fill up the ranks a bit with the support of him. Um, but I think I need to tend 
to the situation over here. So I'm going to order this cluster now. Let's see how we're going to do it. These guys cannot retreat. That's nice. So we're going to go down here. Um, these guys will back off. They will actually go two hexes. They cannot then throw them the pillow or anything. Or maybe we should just go here and throw the pillow. Yeah, let's do that. And we go here. So let's see now. I'll start from here to here. Four dice, one hit needed. We got it. The first banner won by the Romans. Then they could gain ground. I don't want to do that. I will stay here. Then we have these guys. They will attack the full strength warrior unit. Four dice. Oh, this is a good roll. Let me see now. That's two hits, first of all. Then we have two flags. They could ignore the first because they were full strength warrior, but the second one they need to take and they need to retreat two. So they go one, two, meaning these guys could gain ground and attack again. And this guy, time they will attack the leader's unit. Four dice again. And that would be two hits on the enemy. They would do battle back with four dice since they were full strength. Ooh. That's a great roll. Four hits on the legionaries. Okay, so this is a real bitter fighting happening. They were, you know, waiting for the Romans to wade through the first unit and then they hit back hard on the second on the second wave here, you could say. So a whole legionary unit just eliminated. By the way, I think I didn't check the leader last check here first. We're gonna do that. But anyway, this is a kill anyway, because there's no leader hits uh, here, you see. Uh, but let's check these leaders first. Uh, Gallic one, he's good. And then we're gonna check him who is uh, Sextius. Yeah, for good one die. He's fine. So you're going to retreat three hexes back, but we should not forget to get the banner to the Gauls. Oh, this is heavy action. We have one more unit to do, and these guys will throw the Pila against that unit with one die. Hitting them. Wow. Good Pila throw up the hill there. Well, that's some action. Uh, that was a Roman turn. We have still dangerous units and these guys could be uh, blocked from retreating and they're not no more supported since their leader died or their leader's unit died. The leader himself is not dead. Uh, this could be a critical turn now. Let's see if the, if the Gauls can manage to activate over here on their right hand flank. A, B, or C. So they have three cards to choose from. That's good for them. So let's see now. We have a line command, which is not excellent because we cannot get behind them with that card. Uh, we have three units left, which sadly for them are over there. And then we have the two center, which is not good enough. So... Mm, Meaning, I will play the line command. We cannot hinder those guys from retreating, but we can advance on them in a good way. So let's do like... Yeah, so I'm gonna order this cluster of units, or this chunk of units. Um... I will fill up the ranks a bit from the rear here. So I'm gonna move up these warrior units up here. These guys will throw javelins. These guys will throw the javelins or fight these guys if needed. 
So let's see who should go in. Let's take that unit. Yeah, let's do it like that. So let me see now. Start. Um, hmm. Okay, we start from this flank. I think these guys cannot. They will just stay here. So these guys start the fight. That will be three dice. I start from here. They don't have leader support though. I could go, hold on, I could go like that. Yeah, I'll do that. So I actually back off with those guys and give these guys leader support. So now we start the battle phase. Oh, so we're gonna do a three dice attack there and we have leader support. That's one hit and it's also a flag. Um, so they need to take it. They go back here. Then these guys will attack them with three dice. Leader support again. No hits, but they're retreating once more. I'm gonna move in that direction. These guys could follow and they will do. They are warriors, so they're gonna run after them and try to kill them once more. This time, two hits, no more lead support, otherwise that would be in a total kill, but that's good. Two hits. These guys will do battle back with four dice. Doing one hit on the goals. So no victory banners dealt. We are still alive with these two units. Barely, but still. And then we have some ranged combat to do. So these guys, they have not moved. So they will f uh, throw two uh, dice attacks on these one. So let's start from here. Oh, two hits? Really? Oh man. That's crazy. So we got another victory banner for the gold. That was an awesome throw. <laughs> okay. Interesting shape of, of shaping of the battlefield now. Uh, as you can see here, uh, I'll replace the card first of all. I think I'm gonna end this session here, but uh, as you can see, this is real, really, really interesting. So we have a nice big line of Gallic troops waiting for the Romans to approach. Um, I think the Romans will do yet one more attempt before breaking Getrix get into the scene. The Romans go next, so we have a ripe target, so we could even out the victory banner count to 2-2 two to two here next turn. I think also if we can get the 10th Legion up, uh, pressing forward uh, with Caesar, we might get an edge here. We have some units getting a bit weak, probably the Gauls might back off with those and tighten the line, kind of dress the ranks there a bit, and then see if we can hold that um, hill line there. We could also reinforce the Romans to start attacking on that flank as well, but they are really strong here and they have the cavalry, so do we as the Romans, but still, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, at any time the Kingetris could get into the scene and then the Romans are in a bad position on their left hand flank so they they would need to gain some progress here before uh, we see Viking Gotrix uh, enter the scene. Anyway, I said I think that's enough for one session so we have the Gauls in the lead 2 to 1 and we have seen intense action already in the first uh, session here and I like that. So let's see how this battle goes. Um, I said we have eight banners to fight too, so there's a lot of action still. Okay, thank you guys for watching and I hope you will be back for the uh, second part of the Battle of Gregovia, fought 52 uh, BC. Bye-bye.